Welcome back, everybody. We are so back. We're playing um, Phoenix Ride again for the first time in like three months. <laughs> um, so uh, I really hope that the new game, not the new game, the second game that we're playing today, I really, really hope it has a recap because I forgot everything. <laughs> the only thing I remember is that Maya um, is no longer with us. And by that, I mean she left on a train to go somewhere else. And that's kind of all I remember. So <laughs> we're starting the second game today. Still a little loud. Why? Could it just be the menu music? And maybe we'll see. We'll see how it is in game. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember what the DLC case was. I don't. Rise from the ashes. Final day. Wait, didn't we do it already? No. Oh. Ladder two. Didn't we do this already? Wait, 11, f wait. You have to do a new game? I do? For the second game? Play this game. Oh, so the second one is Justice for All. Okay. Okay, thank you, chat room. Thank you, chat room. Episode one, the lost turnabout. Um. Y'all said that some of the later games have voice acting. Is this one of them? No. Well, let me have some tea then. <laughs> let me have some of my tea. <laughs> Yay! Second game, I'm so excited! I can't wait! Um, keep me updated on the audio. Because people keep saying it's too loud, but on OBS it looks like it's quiet. Grr! How did I get into this mess? Oh, Phoenix is the murderer of this one. That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix, right? What did I do? Is that the judge? What, what have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. No? But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence. You are no longer worthy of your title. The most professional that judge has ever sounded, by the way. <laughs> that judge doesn't ever know what's going on. Certainly this is a dream. <laughs> District Court, September 8th, defendant lobby number one. Not this pose. Phoenix, what are you doing later? What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. <laughs> He's asleep in the courtroom? Home? When did this game come out? When did this game come out? Why does he have a Nokia? Is this one like 2002 or 2003? 2002, damn. She's old. Huh. Looks like they hung up. Well, the phone had been ringing for ages, so. Ah, good, I finally found it. Oh, what the hell is going on? Talk about a close call, I hate to do this to you, but. That's some clumpy under eye mascara, I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. Nothing personnel. Third game is 2004, ah. Then we get flip phones. Few minutes later, district court, defendant lobby number one. <gasps> We're back! Ouch, my head, it's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? <laughs> Who's the Girl Scout? <gasps> oh, crazy cat lady, thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. <laughs> um, I have a concussion. <laughs> Hopital. Hopital ambulance. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Listen, as a morning person, I can say I understand why some of y'all hate morning people. I get it. We are a little obnoxious, but I'm not this bad. Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? <laughs> My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Um, 
Am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm the one in trouble. What? <laughs> I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life in my hands? <laughs> what are, are we defending her? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. N not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> well, I didn't... I don't know if that's the biggest mistake of her life, because I didn't lose any cases in the last game. Sure, I was saved scumming sometimes, but I didn't lose any, so I think it's fine. <laughs> Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. Her right arm must be jacked from doing this all day. <laughs> Do you think she walks, like, slanted because one arm's heavier than the other? You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? <laughs> this is going great. Safe scumming is just what sets you apart from the other lawyers. Exactly. The other lawyers don't do that. What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? I'm kind of on her side. <laughs> You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just that, well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, who am I? <gasps> Why am I drawing a blank? Amnesia, amnesia, he's got amnesia. <laughs> the trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? Trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Uh... I guess I must have amnesia. <laughs> Not dementia. It's over. It's so over. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I say I'd prove her not guilty. I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Yeah, someone please. Oh, is this where, is this where um, Mia comes in with her boobs and then her boobs speak to Phoenix and tell him what to do? Tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Well. <laughs> September 8th, District Court, courtroom number two. Uh-oh. Oh, Phoenix is dead. <laughs> courtroom is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Okay, well, I know her name now, so that's good. Wasn't he? He was the tutorial prosecutor in the first game. I recognize this guy. I made his toupee jump off his head. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, are you talking to me? <laughs> Do you see any other defense attorneys in here? I guess not. Hell of a way to start off a game. Um, my AC is working a little too well and my nose is running. So hold on, I need to blow my nose. Nobody clip this. Okay, thank you. I guess not. Now then, are you ready? If I said no, would that be all right? <laughs> of course it wouldn't. <laughs> then why bother asking to begin with? <laughs> Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. 
Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. She's a police officer? Why does she look like a Girl Scout? I believe I've told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Uh, can I just ask you a quick question? If he got slammed over the head with a fire hydrant, surely he'd be bleeding? Surely he'd be bleeding. Wouldn't that be proof enough that he was like attacked? Or maybe he doesn't know he was attacked because he got amnesia. Whatever. I don't even remember what I said the first time. The fire extinguisher. Yeah. Wouldn't he be bleeding? But he has amnesia, and that's the that's the plot. That that um ruins all plot holes because he has amnesia. Because he has amnesia. Actually, I have. <laughs> Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer? Police on police crime? A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Um... How's the audio? Is it still too loud? It's cartoon logic. They can do whatever they want. They got cartoon logic and they got amnesia. So they don't have to do anything. It's perfect. Okay, cool. Thank you, chat. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. Hee hee hee! It's been a while, Mr. Rye. Let's see what you've learned since last time. When I destroyed you in like five minutes? Okay. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay. And who are you again? <laughs> DC with 99 months? 99? Thank you so much, dude. It's really good to see you. I hope you're having a good day. Thank you. And Emily, thank you so much also for the two months. I missed it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Our boy is back. He's so back. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. <laughs> Oh, my boy. He looks like a he looks like a dog that just got caught eating out of a trash can. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. She, she reminds me of, um, who was that one officer from, from the, uh, the crime where there was two, was that the DLC one where the guy came to deliver a message and he, Meekins? Yes. She reminds me of Meekums, Meekins, Detective Meekins or whatever, Officer Meekins. She reminds me of him. Is that the detective that was killed? No. What was his first name? Probably not. I think you guys would have told me if it was. Bruce. His name was Bruce? Mike? Chat room, pick a name. <laughs> Please pick one. He's such a wonderful guy. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Oh, not Meekins. Not Meekins. Thotisha Meekins. Thotisha Meekins Shunt. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. That doesn't look like that big of a fall. That fall killed him? What is that, like four feet? That killed him? Dustin Prince. Dustin Prince. <laughs> Dustin Prince. I didn't get it until <laughs> I get it. I didn't get it until you brought it up. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, uh, yes, this autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? 
I see everything is in order here. Wait, can I look at it? Oh, I have stuff. Okay, attorney's badge. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Time of death, September 6th at 6.28 p.m. Cause broken neck, body was also covered in bruises. Broken glasses. Found under the victim's body, pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Oh, the nearsighted's gonna come into play. I can feel it. I just know I can feel it. I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. The victim fell from the walking path above. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> me too also. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? I said no. I literally said no. There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? His glasses. Have you lost your mind? Well, actually, <laughs> now that you ask, um, it's just nerves, give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. All right, sir, I'll help you through this. But your boobs aren't as big as Mia's. How are you gonna help me? Her boobs are filled with like legal knowledge. That's how she's so helpful. It's part of the lore. There's a reason for it. It's where she stores all of her legality knowledge. We need law and order. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. I already did. I already did. Sorry, court record. Yup, info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing tab. Tab, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? You're onto something, kid. <laughs> It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. When did he become such a, like, good judge? Hello, Miss Pussy. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Cunt. <laughs> Mrs. Cunty Pusslay boss. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Janelle. Wasn't he like kind of a dope in the first game? Why is he like doing his job now? What's wrong with him? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record and see what I can find. I already did. I already did. It's because he never saw you. It's because he saw your VOD. Oh, he saw my VODs and he was like, oh damn, I gotta straighten myself out. What was it again? Tab? All right, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? It was a glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. Oh, they weren't his. Oh. Intense music is a little bit loud. Okay, let's see. Um, background music, special, let's do. Let's put that to one and see how it goes. And then if, if it's too quiet, let me know. Go back, I says. The music just stopped. <laughs> now it's just not playing. <laughs> All I did was put it to one. There's no music here. Oh, okay. And held on to them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Mm. Yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. Okay. Is this better or is it too quiet? Music is better. Okay, good. It's so hard to tell what's quiet and loud. 
Cause like on my end, the OBS level is in the green, which usually for me means it's kind of quiet. But then for you guys, it was too loud. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you for letting me know. A coincidence, she says, ugh. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear it from our witness about this evidence. Oh, <gasps> witness testimony. <laughs> These are my favorite part. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. See, this was in another, this was in another thing. This was in another one and it was wrong. This was in another case and it was wrong. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not buying this. I know Phoenix has amnesia, I don't. Maggie. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. If he snapped his neck, wouldn't he have just died? He, surely he wouldn't have time to like, and also could he even move his arm if he snapped his neck? Did he even have time for, hmm. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. So where was she this night? Was she even there? This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Why is the, why this is, yes, I can see her name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood, the court accepts it into evidence. A photo of the area around the victim's hand. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. <laughs> the victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, but I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy, I <laughs> killed his, oh no. <laughs> It's not looking good. <laughs> he was trying to write, Maggie, my love, I fear do not have long and I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Maggie, will you marry me? Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Yeah, I got questions. This is it, I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? <laughs> this isn't like you at all. Normally this is the part where you get in the witness's faces. Get in their faces and do what? <laughs> I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm gonna lend you a hand. The prosecution's witness all hide things. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective, isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective, he does sort of look like a scatterbrain. <laughs> Him literally being cross-eyed as we're talking about. <laughs> Not always, oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be all right. Um, someone told me once to just object to everything. Let's <laughs> see what happens. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Profiles? The name is spelled wrong. Her name's not spelled like that. Not that, um, not that, uh, that, uh, Phoenix would know because he doesn't remember anything. <laughs> Something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name. <gasps> yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm really, I'm realizing why this feels weird. It's because the first game I played with a controller and I'm playing it with a mouse and keyboard now. Interesting. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but was the name that of my client? I don't like saying it, but was clearly a defendant's name Maggie. So no. Wrong. Are you absolutely certain? <laughs> Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter what you look at, it still says Maggie. He's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't haunt me. I know the picture says Maggie, but now that she mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know, that's 
And that's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with her. I would rather have someone like her than <laughs> someone like Maya. No offense. Maya or um, the other person that came with us for the DLC. I forgot who it was. I'd rather have her because she's like, can you fucking get it together? <laughs> get it together, Phoenix. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I'd better check the court record again. I don't have to. I know what it is. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. Keep the fighting. Oh, I have to present it. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but I really want to see your special move, sir. My ultimate? Ima. Yeah, it was Ima. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present evidence? Oh, that present evidence. <laughs> Actually, I was just thinking about that. Yes, the Great Phoenix Ride is back. Oh, that's right. Huh? I heard that lately you can present not only evidence, but people's profiles. Woo! People's profiles. So I have to present her profile to be like, hey, her name is spelled like this, actually. It sure makes things a bit more complicated, so be careful, sir. People's profiles, huh? All right, let's give this another try. Like saying it was the Maggie. Present profile. Objection! No objection. He did it. <laughs> can we get an objection chat? Uh, chat room on Twitch. Can we get some objections in the chat? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What, what's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. <laughs> what a rush. Detective Gumshoe. You talking to me, pal? Please say the defendant's name for me. His objection is disgusting. Disgusting. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. What? Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's uh, name is uh, Maggie Bird. No. That's, that's how I see the, um, you know the new emojis on iPhone where it's like a nod and a, and a, like a shake of the head? That's how I see the shake of the head. It's like, no, <laughs> no, no. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! <laughs> it looks like the bird caught the cat napping. <laughs> What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> As you can see. The victim did indeed leave a name Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. <laughs> this is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, but, but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said... The defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not have known her name. Yeah. Magay. <laughs> this is very true. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were, in fact, lovers? Y yes, I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. She said they weren't, though. Magay. <laughs> Gay. Nancy Drew and the mystery of the Magays. Yes, sir. Dustin and Magay. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. After six months? Six months? The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Well, at least the tombstone's gonna save some space. You save a little bit of money on... <laughs> on the engraving. So that's good. On the plus side, 
You know, silver lining. <laughs> I'm just trying to see the positive side of things. Megay, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had brought she had bought over two months ago. I should know because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, those two sound like they were close. <sighs> Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. What was the present? They've been going out for half a year. Sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Can I look at the um, profiles again? The only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. Policeman seems that he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. Uh, <laughs> the prosecutor for this case lacks presence. <laughs> Generally bad at getting his points across. He's so me. He's so me. Hi, Sally. How you doing? I don't have any voices this time. I don't know. Because to me, he's kind of just like, doy. <laughs> but the rest of them, I don't know. I don't know. And then where's the evidence? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. I don't, uh, I don't know what to present. Even talking about <clears throat> marriage. Marriage? But wasn't that victim eight years older than her? Not bringing up the age gap. What? You saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as himself, pal? Why is he getting so mad? <laughs> no, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Ugh, I think this fella has a ways to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal. What happened to their personalities? Everyone changed. Gumshoe is never like this. He's just kind of a dope. And then the judge was always like also kind of a dope and now they're all serious. What happened? The day of the incident. Oh, press gumshoe about they were even talking about marriage. I got an achievement for that? The incident uh, just happened to be on the victim's birthday, sir. You mean September 6th? Yeah, the victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie, Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. <laughs> Finally, some personality out of this guy. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Officer Bird had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had brought over two months ago. I should know because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. What did she get? You discussed what the defendant was going to give to her boyfriend? Well, I'm a... Uh, <clears throat> She, uh, trusts me, so... Boy, does he look proud of himself right now. <laughs> is he okay? What is it this time? That testimony didn't sound like it had any contradictions in it to me. There just wasn't anything that really stuck out as odd. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if you tried to get more information from him. Like pressing? That's what I've been doing. You just gotta keep doing it? You know, like how they press people on those old cop shows. So I should try pressing him. So I should try pressing my body against his body. So I should try I should try holding my body against him. Wait, can I press I'll just press all of them. <laughs> oh, hi Noah! How do you know about this? Every year in March we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at the time and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I take it. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. If only I had gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, he liked her. He likes her. Is that why? He likes her. That's why he got all defensive. And now he wishes he was on that trip so that he could date her and say, oh, he likes her. He likes her. Really, anyway. Day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday. Maggie had gotten him a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, I'm her boss and I've got to watch out for my subordinates. But even what she was going to give as a present, isn't that going a bit too far? Hey pal, which, watch what you say. I can't read today, I'm gonna stop it. I know everything that happens under me. If someone so much as scratches their, okay. <laughs> I really don't need to know that. 
<laughs> me with my chat. That's me with my chat. I can sense when one of y'all is scratching your, you know, butt cheek. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please refrain from the badgering of the wind, from badgering the witness. Oh my God, why can't I read today? I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant. <laughs> now this is the judge I know and love. That's my judge. He's coming back to us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that should not be the point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a second. Why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. Me? I think the good detective is about done here. It was something she had bought over two months ago. Over two months ago? Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So... What was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Aww. Oh, I see, a baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove? Hmm. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? <laughs> she ordered it. It was a cu it was custom made. Custom made. The glove was custom made. Yep, that's what I said. I don't really see where this is going. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to be putting it together with them and I'm like not getting it. <laughs> Baseball? Baseball? Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to this case. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to the case? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't know where this will lead me, but <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> of course it's relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes! Bluffing to the man! <laughs> Even she's like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Now this is the Mr. Right I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Hmm, pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. It looks a little floppy. This is it, sir. It's uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Also, why does he have the gift? If they were on a date for his birthday, she was gonna give him the gift, why does he have it? It's rather yellow, isn't it? A birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow, and that's why you had to special order it. Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. Oh no, that's right hand. I was gonna say, he's left handed, but that's right hand. <laughs> also, she could like help me out here a little bit and remind me what the other reason was. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? And that's the question. I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. Writing on the ground. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. But he spelled Magay wrong. Yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. He's getting it. He's getting it. He's coming together after after being smashed over the head with a, a fire extinguisher. 
First looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. That seems important. So in the end, you couldn't confirm it? Hey, don't you look down on us. I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with this with scientific investigation. Bestie is so defensive today. Oh my god, not professional sniffer. What do I smell like? <laughs> uh, no, no backseating, please. I like to figure this stuff out on my own. Unless I specifically say, chat, can you help me? Please, no backseating. I've never heard that before. Me neither, nor I. I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, let's move on. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. And what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write the name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by writing on the ground. Derm abrasion. He should know better. Hopefully he moisturized before he Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible. Sure is. That's the power of scientific investigation, which you just said you can't figure out everything with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. <laughs> you mean a microscope? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. We used one of those, and that's how we found him. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote his name with his right hand. Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. But this is for a this is for a right-handed baseball glove. Does that mean? Wait. So does that mean you you? When you play baseball, do you pitch? Do you pitch? Do you pitch with the one that doesn't have the glove because the glove's for catch? I'm trying to figure this out in my brain because I'm like it's right-handed. But if in baseball when you throw you throw a baseball with your hand hand that's not a glove, then I'm gonna try that because that's the only thing I got going on in my brain. The name was definitely written by the victim. Don't you think that would be really strange, sir, if Dustin really wrote that message with his right hand? Do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? A present? What about it? Okay, let's try this again. This is, oh, I pressed him. I didn't mean to press him. Ugh. I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pre- I didn't- I meant to present. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody. Okay. I don't know anything about sports, so I'm gonna just, uh, try my best. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but... It's really yellow, and that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Oh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed per- Ayo! We got it, brother! We got it! As soon as she said it was custom made for a specific reason, I was like, oh, surely he's left-handed. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's right-handed, but I don't know anything about sports, y'all. <laughs> I'm a gamer and I read and I play Just Dance and Stardew Valley. I don't know anything about sports. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, um, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his... Uh, 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 wait a second! <laughs> Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Yeah. What if it was Gumshoe? 
What if he killed him so he could get to Magay? Because he was jealous. Oh my God, imagine Gumshoe in prison on episode one. Yeah. <laughs> this is, that is, I mean, I, I'm just, <laughs> overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. No pun intended. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Excuse me. Order, order. When you think about it that way, then yes. It's not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. What if he was ambidextrous? Then she probably wouldn't have had to have a custom-made glove. If he was ambidextrous, she probably would have just gotten him a right-handed glove. Or a, a left-handed glove. I could mess write a message with my right hand. It'd look awful, but I could do it. Exactly, and the handwriting here is so neat. I could not write like this, left-handed. Ain't no way. Can I try it now for funsies? Hold on. This is a Little Sia Incorporated official test. I'm gonna write it with my left hand, because I'm right-handed. Did anyone else have that school gossip thing where people would be like, oh, if you're left-handed, that means um, you're uh, one of Satan's um, uh, slaves or something. <laughs> what was that about? Okay. M A G G It actually doesn't look that bad, but it um, it still looks like shit. <laughs> so, it doesn't, here, on top of it, I'll write how I would have looked. The top is my actual handwriting. It's actually not that different. You know what? Maybe we're onto something. Maybe it was, maybe it was my gay. Maybe she did do it. Then that means my gay is no, it's not possible, Mr. Payne. Yeah, yeah, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> the evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. Rare left-handed message, St. Jude auction. Oh, I just threw it away. It's in my trash can with all my used tissues. It'll go for even more money. <laughs> no! All right, you did it, Mr. Wright. Phew, I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Oh, that's my name. <laughs> a note by Little Sia and some snot to go along with it because I'm so generous. Year old snot <laughs> with used tissue goop. Ew, so <laughs> Jesus. Oh, well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more, read I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. <gasps> no, not yet. I love a last minute objection. It's so cunty. I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. Wh what is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? <laughs> All? And what did this witness witness <laughs> the moment the victim was pushed to his death? So where was he before? I can't lose to this guy again. <laughs> Not in the tutorial quest. Not again. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? So where was this before? Yeah, lead with that next time. <laughs> order, order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. <laughs> hmm, I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. Okay, I think now is a good time to take a little break. We are so back. Can I tell you guys, I didn't realize that the stream deck had um, a button where you could pause and unpause recordings on OBS, changed my life. 
changed my life. I know you guys don't care because you don't see my OBS, but oh my God, it changed my life because I would have to like alt tab out of my game and like scroll over and hit the button. And now I can just press the button in front of me. It's so great. It's so helpful. Okay, let's keep going. We're in a recess right now. September 8th, 1143 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby number one. Amnesia. <laughs> What a great way to come back from a break. Amnesia. I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh, why didn't you tell me, sir? I didn't have time. I didn't know what was going on. I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this one with a really strong shock to your system. <gasps> Clear. I just got CPR certified for St. Jude like two months ago. I know how to use an AED. I know how to do this. <laughs> I have a little card in my wallet that says I'm certified to do this. Come on, lower your head a little. A mega kick should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 I think I'll pass on this one. Come on. I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them all alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. I'm sorry I'm just so generous. I'm sorry I'm just so generous and try to fix everyone's problems. It's such a bad quality of mine. I should really stop. Well, my head's one problem we won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Put that arm down, girl. <laughs> Give it a rest, literally. Of course, I'd be honored to. Oh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. My gay. <laughs> Amnesia. <laughs> that's him trying to bring it back. The karma bang. That's him trying to, like, bring it back. <laughs> I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Wright? What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There's some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. Oh, I gave her my number? Uh... <laughs> Phoenix is slick. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case this case. Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but cell phone. Yeah. Your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me this might be very important. Okay. Roger. The cell phone I have in my pocket it was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. Not the blue badger. <laughs> All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Beep. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. You can call me Maggie. So whoever the owner of the phone is killed him and then made his finger write Maggie, but he only heard it. He didn't see it written down, so he didn't know how it was spelled. <gasps> Uh-oh. And she's holding the little glove. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is it the phone in my pocket? You mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? Yes, sir? Yes, sir? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all along! Where the fuck did Maya come from? Where did she come from? Shouldn't you be on a mountain meditating or something? Shouldn't you be licking crystals on a mountain? Why are you here? You're so mean. I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Who are you? <laughs> now, who in the heck is this? 
Let me guess. I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning. Maggie. She's here. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh? And what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence. Oh, thank God. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this, a list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good, as in, there's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. A list of unfamiliar names and phone numbers. Members of a con artist group? Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? No. You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. <laughs> That's how everyone talks to me now that I'm 29. The second I turn 30, it's over for me. Everyone's gonna be like, everyone's gonna be like, you need some pudding, grandma? If I'm having a bad day, people are gonna be like, you need your pudding? It's almost past your bedtime. It's almost 3 p.m. <laughs> uh, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Uh-oh. Oh, oops, guess you can, guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Is she still like expelled from the courtroom? Didn't she get expelled once for like talking out of turn and then she was never let back in? Wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this, I can't. Come on, Nick, better get a move on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what if he's like, my name's not Nick, it's Phoenix. <laughs> Can't confirm. <laughs> the thing is, I don't feel old. I feel great. I'm a little bloated, but I feel great. No. <laughs> I love the way they shake their heads. No. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I ask that the court might be a little lenient on... <laughs> no. There's no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness, a drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. This again? This is the second time. This is the second time that this guy has been the prosecution to a case where he brought up the actual murderer as a witness. This is the second time. This guy needs to be fired. Oh my God. Please say your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. <laughs> I feel like he talks like that. I feel like he does. Huh? Oh, all right, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? Did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've, t now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Should I suppose calling me and you know, oh, 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 oh. I'm not clicking through this, just, you know, <laughs> he's just yapping. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. She came with me! She said good luck and then she came with me. What is he, a human chatterbox? Ugh, I have to question him? <laughs> Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. What the fuck is he on about? <laughs> glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness. Mm. <laughs> oh, is that a 
way you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. <laughs> you old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Contacts, please? You're having a whole conversation with yourself that I'm not clued in on. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I'm Richard Wellington, a drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. <laughs> I told you guys he so how he sounds. I took one look at him and I knew his accent. <laughs> I knew exactly what it was. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Um, Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a, uh, strolling through the park, correct? Uh, it would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. <laughs> Yapping to... <laughs> But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with my mommy. <laughs> if you... <laughs> anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. He's such a chatterbox. Surely we're going to get a confession out of him in about 0.5 seconds. Surely. Sorry, I just need some honey tea for my throat. These games are hard to play, man. They kill my throat. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know, you... <laughs> what you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Please shut the hell up. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police on <laughs> The banana. <laughs> hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Meg A? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. That guy right there, Mr. Yappington, he's lying. You may not question the witness, Mr. Wright. Oh, I will be doing that. I'll find out the truth no matter how well you craft her lies. For someone with amnesia being thrown into a court case, he's handling this really well. I'd be crying. <laughs> me? Me personally? I'd be crying fetal position on the floor, hugging my knees, rocking back and forth. I would not be handling it this well. Oh, I the park all afternoon deep in thought about my life situation. What is your life situation? So you were at the park all afternoon? You seem to have a lot of free time. Mm. That was very rude of you, but then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. Damn. Damn. You go to the University of Drifting and you're gonna talk to me like that? No name? Trashy. Now, this might be hard for a moosh-headed, feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. <laughs> but I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. <laughs> oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. He's lying. Hit him with the fire extinguisher. Oh, he's lying. He hit him with the fire extinguisher in the start. That's why he has amnesia. Great thinking. <laughs> That's so true, bestie. That's so true. That arrogant little snot. <laughs> I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. Present. On everything. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Ugh. His arrogance is really intolerable, so what should I do now? I'm on the right track! Answer the question, how did you know what time it was? <laughs> how, 
How do you do that noise again? <laughs> How do you do that noise? I forgot. Tisk tisk. Tisk tisk. Oh no, it's the it's the clicking of the tongue. It's the it's the it's that, right? Yes. Sorry, reading it and hearing it sounds so different to me that I'm like, what's a tisk? <laughs> I can't believe I have oh I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desk and point at people for fun. He's not telling any lies. And the sky is blue. Hmm, I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. I want this guy to lick rust. I want this guy to shit in his hands and clap. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Oh, so it is. I looked at that clock and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole concept of, uh, a, a real first class person that doesn't live, and to wear, what, uh, what a ridiculous, people should live freely without constraint. Oh my God. And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. <laughs> Talk about a first class waste of time. In any case, <laughs> all of a sudden a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. And how did you know he was a police officer? <laughs> you obviously have no idea how many how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That shoddy do-it-yourself hairstyle, and it was the only way Teddy's tight. Oh, and I suppose it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. <laughs> Shouldn't that statement have come first? <laughs> Let's lead with that. <laughs> Let's lead with that. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick, do you think he's figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured out that yet. <laughs> Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? <laughs> Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. Slam on that desk, Phoenix. You slam on that fucking desk. Show them what's what. I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustain, Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. And please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's all right with you. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant over there. Oh. Rap God? <laughs> so you're sure you are not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. Jesus Christ. Everyone's so angry. I'm what you call a famous brand name product. Well, you are only a cheap imitation. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? There's no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was that banana that fell with the police officer. Wrong. Wasn't a banana, wrong. You're under arrest. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one, more like a bunch of bananas. Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? <laughs> Phoenix trying so hard to figure this out. <laughs> Why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. McGay never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. We know what the bananas are. It's the glove. That's it, Nick. He's got to be lying about the bananas. <laughs> hmm. He could be, but there's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime. It's the glove. Come on, Chad. Come on, Chad. Come on, Phoenix. Come on, Maya. Let's get it together. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something like a glove. Man, the the introductory cases to these are always so like, do you know where my map is? <laughs> it's very Dora the Explorer. Where's my backpack? If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. 
think, Fingers, like, think. If my client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow see, show he's lying. Did she read my mind? Did she read my mind? Yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind. But I just wish I could remember who she is. <laughs> is everything okay, Nick? No. <laughs> no. I want my mommy. <laughs> the banana. Wrong. Eh. Mr. Wellington. I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. And then he puts his penis on the t I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That should have been an inside thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> that one was supposed to stay inside. I'm really sorry. Uh, so, so you knew about the bananas too? Why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> Cliff it, <laughs> the outside thoughts one. But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? <gasps> a, a baseball glove? Ooh, someone's stupid. Someone was wrong for once. Someone's dumb. Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? <laughs> Th that's... That's not... It's... No! <laughs> Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness <laughs> has bad, bad eyesight. <gasps> the glasses are his because they're for nearsighted people. They're for nearsighted people. But the baseball glove was far away, so the glasses are his. And he was the one on the other end of the phone that heard the name Maggie. Oh, shit. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Oh, uh, how, what? Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? I don't know why he's a male version of uh, Judy Garland, but that's where we're going today. Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Objection overruled. You, you, you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> one of those people who've had LASIK eye surgery. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo. You're too used to a word for you. Sure, in the end, we find out that this is it. When viewed from afar, do you think there is room enough for death? <laughs> and that's why I asked you how about your eyesight is. They're both 2200. I suppose you're going to tell me that's a terrible, right? Isn't that really bad? 2200 eyesight. What does it mean to have 2400, 2200, or 2100 vision? I don't think Phoenix Wright has access to Google in um, 2002, so. One part of the definition of blindness is a visual acuity of 200, tw sorry, 2200 or less in the good eye with the best possible correction. He's legally blind? He's legally blind? The measurements of 2200 signify how well you can see things at distance, distances of 20 feet with the lowest number being the best. For example, 2020 is con considered perfect vision. I've been told I have 2015 after LASIK. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Give it up. Give it up, y'all. Uh, in the United States, the definition of legally blind is twofold. On the Snellen eye chart, the first line typically contains only one letter and is, and is the determination for 2200 vision. If you cannot read this line, it means that your visual acuity is two, 2200 or worse. He can't even read the first letter. Isn't the first letter just a giant E? He can't even read that? Oh, damn. Those are his glasses. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? You're literally blind. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you are legally blind. Why are you not wearing your glasses today then? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. So if he couldn't even tell it was the bananas, obviously he couldn't tell who pushed them. Duh. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them, 
How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? <laughs> the animations when you start to catch people in their lies in this game are insane. <laughs> They're so dramatic. <laughs> How about it, witness? You are an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who rejected Joan of Arc. She was brave and courageous only to be caught by her and she didn't do anything wrong. She was still burned at the stake. <laughs> Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. Yeah. <laughs> but the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Mm. Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Mm, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. But how could you read the clock if you are legally blind? They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Wait, when did the report say they showed up? Oh, it doesn't say. Hmm. Oh, but I can't read this. Okay. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer. But you couldn't even see her because you can't see anything. <laughs> I'm putting that in there. And he called right away at 6.45. Yeah, I know. It's a little suspicious. Suspicious. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Can I use the arrow keys for this? No. Damn. That'd be nice. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I don't want to believe it. 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 Must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. Can I present the uh, the thingy? 628. Oh, first try? I love when the music stops because I'm like, I did it. <laughs> I did it, first try. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 628 PM. So what of it? <laughs> you said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There's clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Yeah. I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. Yeah. <laughs> the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder, but he said immediately. He said immediately. <laughs> he was jorking it. But your honor, I was jerking my penis. <laughs> it's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah. Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, uh, I mean... Spit it out. I I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions as if you're trying to open all the layers of a... How do you pronounce that? Matryoshka doll? You must think you're really something special. I'm a defendant. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer? Witness. I, I lost my cell phone there. Are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. <laughs> you must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. I love the judge insulting his intelligence. 
Wow, your brain doesn't sound as superior as you said. What? Are you saying that first rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard of all genies of it? But by version now, you should Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, the cell phone. Could it be? You mean this phone Megay found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Imagine clicking back off. Not me. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? What are you getting at? What are you... Uh, 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 <laughs> eh, what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See? Here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have a cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by a search for a phone booth. Mm. Can I just stab this guy? Let's murder another person. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's your phone number? Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for a witness to search for a phone. Uh, how dare you? <laughs> I should probably say it. I should probably say it. What a horrible voice. I'm so sorry, but what a horrible voice. You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. All right, let's have this proof then. Please present the proof that witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, because there was one right there! Literally right in front of him! Oh my god! <laughs> it's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something's wrong with you. Where's my vine boom? <laughs> Something's wrong with you. No, <laughs> it's, it's a phone booth. That's correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? No, <laughs> God is ass. God is ass. Order, order. I love when the when the courtroom starts going nuts like this. It's so fun. What is reporting the crime a little late proof to, for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him so there's no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm, but if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else? Was he looking for something else? The glove? No, because he didn't know it was a glove. Maybe he, if they're con artists, maybe he was trying to like rob him? I don't know, where was, where was, um, where was uh, Maggie? Cause she didn't give us any information cause this is a tutorial. So she's not going to tell us anything, but where the hell was she? Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during this? Uh, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's only one possible explanation. He was on the top. Maybe he wasn't on the bottom. He was on the top cause he pushed him. So that's why he couldn't find a phone booth because he wasn't down there. All right, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard you loud and clear. <laughs> you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present Mr. Wright. I'll be penalized, you promise? 
<laughs> oh my god. Yes, Your Honor. Ugh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. <laughs> Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Because Maggie had his phone? Maybe because Maggie had it? Or because he was writing the name in the sand. Maybe he was writing the name. But that wouldn't take 15 minutes. Mm, I wish I could read the names list. I'm gonna say, because Maggie still had his phone. Because if she was there and ran away, then she ran away with his phone. And they still have it. I think it's wrong. Oh, no, it's wrong. Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <gasps> you only go down one? Or is that just for the tutorial? Because in the last game, you went down two bars at a time. Before you do, you will be penalized. Okay, sorry. Well, if you know the right answer, then you tell us. Okay, then I'm gonna guess uh, writing the name. A photo of the area around the victim's hand. This is it, right? Let me make sure. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Perhaps this is the evidence. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know how to show that he was on the upper part. Hold on, let me load. Let me load. Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I show them my badge? <laughs> Did you guys know I'm a defense attorney? Could he have been looking for his glasses? Maybe. I'm gonna get by my glasses. <laughs> but he's nearsighted, so if he was like close to the ground, he'd be able to find them. <sighs> um, I'm gonna guess the glasses. Maybe he's looking for his glasses. My glasses. In Save Scum We Trust. <laughs> Mr. Wellington. Uh, what? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah, uh, where? Where did you find? <gasps> he admitted it. He admitted it. I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. Now, wait a second, hold on. I, I didn't confess or confirm uh, anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. Maybe in the 15 minutes, because he was up top, maybe he ran down and looked for his glasses and then drew the name. I don't know. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. That is why it took him 15 minutes to make the call. There were so many witnesses there. Wouldn't people have seen him push the guy? I'm so confused. Hi, GJC, how are you? Good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. If you have any Twitch questions, let us know. We'll help you. M Mr. Wright, are you, are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course, that is precisely what I'm doing. Ooh, <laughs> Can we get some karma bang in here, please? I think we just reached his karma bang moment. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to the case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. What the hell does deep six mean? We're gonna penis lies the deep six guy? We're gonna deep six him in a penis -lization? I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, one shot! <laughs> Yeah, 
just one. It only takes one. <laughs> this is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything gets rest on the edge of a knife. Everything everything rests on the edge of a knife. I can't read today. Do you guys know um, what other uh, video game has a character in Japan where he wears an attorney's badge and the attorney's really hot? Judgment. Judgment and Lost Judgment. Very good games. Very good, fun games. There's one, uh, there's one um, mission in Judgment where you have to chase after a guy's toupee because it gets blown away with the wind. You have to chase after it to get it back for him. I love those games. <laughs> The judgment games are so good. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Oh, but don't play them in English. It's better in Japanese. I tried the English dub and I was like, oh, I'll just read the subtitles. It's fine. Order, order. Your honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Y y yeah, that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This third rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that's, that's easy. Um, for example, there's um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, yeah even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie, and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie or Maggie? <laughs> that is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. I forgot. <laughs> Hi, Undertaker! How you doing, BV? Since when was Avery into Ace Attorney? Dude! So we started playing through these games in like February. Um, the whole playthrough of the first game is up on my gaming channel on YouTube. So if you wanna binge those, they're all up. Um, I took a break during St. Jude month because these games have no voice acting and I have to read everything out and it kills my throat. Um, but I found like a good system where I do like vocal warmups now and I make tea every stretch break with like a ton of honey in it. So it helps a lot. Um, but I took a break for a while cause I just didn't want to read everything out loud. Um, but people were asking me to play it again so much that I was like, fine, if it'll get y'all to stop yapping, I'll play it again. I'll play it again. I love these games though. They're so fun. I can see why they were really popular. They're so fun. Hmm, was there never any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? There was a way. You called the cell phone. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? What would I present, the phone? She got in contact with the owner, but they never showed. Mr. Wellington. You didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you? How did you? <laughs> the music is so good in these games. Oh my god. There, there's a little like dialogue that's a little dated. There's some dated dialogue, but like, I'm willing to view this as like a product of its time where I'm like, you know what? These are from like 2001 or whatever, 2002. It was a different time. These questions have nothing to do with overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? Yes, I do, Rana. <laughs> Not so good, I'm afraid. What's wrong? Let Mama Avery chew you up, baby. What's wrong? What's how is why is your day bad? On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up the lost phone in the park, and she also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Surely he's gonna have like an amnesia moment where he hears this ringtone and he's like, "I was bonked on the head." He's gonna like ascend and just like, "I was bonked on the head." I remember everything. Um, hello? Oh, thank you, I've been searching, I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. 
I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Wee woo, wee woo. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um. <laughs> but you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie, but the name that was written on the ground was Magi. <laughs> This is a mistake that could only occur if you if all you knew was how her name sounded. Nick. He's losing it, man. Oh, brother. We need to sedate him, I think. Order, order. But but your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is, it's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. He sounds kind of bored. He just got a little homicidal because he was bored. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> it's gonna be the corn artist, artist list, right? Oh, she's a detective. Oh, she's a detective. Who's next? Line them up. I'll get through all of them. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on the list are members of a certain group. You, you looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? Con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. I think he'd say privacy, actually, now that I think about it. An invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. <laughs> Now he's just trying to convince himself. He's not even trying to convince us. He's just trying to convince himself. Y you one of those people. You're just like the cops who read it. The result of the genius at work. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, shut the fuck up, please. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, you know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? <laughs> Your Honor, this this is this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have those numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is a member of the group. Oh, I thought one was gonna be like the leader. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! <laughs> no! All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. Listen, I don't know anything about being a criminal, except that one time when I was 16 and I got caught shoplifting and I had to do community service um, to like make up for it. But besides that, if you're, if you're Connors, why are you storing the phone the phone numbers of all your other criminal friends in your phone. Surely you would not save them in the phone. I'll tell you guys the story. You can't just skip that story. Yeah, I was, it, I mean, it was dumb. I was 16 and um, like we grew up pretty poor. So I had still at 16, I had still been wearing clothes that I wore when I was like 11 or 12. Cause like also I didn't grow that much. I was always like a pretty skinny kid. So like they still fit, but I like hated it. I was like, dude, I want like new clothes. Like I want new clothes that fit me that I look good in. And I just started shoplifting cause I was a fucking teenager and I didn't know how to like, I didn't know how to commute my feelings better. So I just started shoplifting and I literally started shoplifting like every single day. And because I went so much, I started getting used to it and thinking I was like, like I was really good at it. So I just, I would literally go into, into like, um, I would go into like dressing rooms with like a bundle of clothes and leave and it would be empty and I got caught. 
<laughs> that explains why you were in jail in just a it sucked. It doesn't justify it, obviously. I learned my lesson. I did my community service and I had to pay a fine and stuff. And I learned my lesson. Um, but it's it just like, I don't know, man. Growing up poor sucks. <laughs> it sucks, especially since I would watch my mom buy new clothes for herself and buy herself all this stuff. And then I'd be like, um, I'm still wearing the clothes from like middle school, so. <laughs> It sucks, but I learned my lesson, and like not long after that, I got a job. I got my first job, so I learned my lesson. I learned from it. I, f I, th I do think every teenager does something stupid at some point. Even really good teenagers do something stupid, so. It is what it is. But I wasn't like arrested and put in jail or anything. I was just in like the, um, I was in the mall jail. <laughs> I was in the mall jail, and then they let me go. Uh... Oh yeah, we're playing Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I forgot. That is why you had to kill. No, this is too much. Oh, because all the phone numbers are stored in the phone and they had the phone so they kill. Ah, I get it, I get it. Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I, I got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer. <laughs> Your Honor, what is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this is, this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Oh, brother. He's like, I can't lose in the tutorial a second time. I bet he's gonna be, chat, you can tell me this now. I'm answering genuinely. Is he in the tutorial of the third game as well? <laughs> Please say yes. Please say yes. <laughs> yes! Oh, that's so good. Oh my god, this is so good. At some point, you gotta hang up, hang up your badge, you know? <laughs> at, some point, at some point, you gotta try it. You just gotta let it go, I think. You just gotta accept. <laughs> no. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. But, but, but please. Please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Beep. Um, hello? Oh, thank you, I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can get this back. We could look up like, we could look up who the, who the other things are or whatever. Other, who called, like what cell phone he called from. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Miss Bird to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about, th think about this? Hmm, if you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. My only guess is maybe the cop like fought him on it. I don't know. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Mm, well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Probably that they were cops. Like maybe they were, he was like, oh, they're cops and they looked into my phone already. They already know all the phone numbers. And if he had called from one of his friend's phone numbers, they would have remembered the number and like caught them all. I don't know, dude. Cause how did he kill, how did he kill one of them but not Maggie? Sorry, Maggie. Defense thinks prosecution is talking out of their asses, your honor. <laughs> if only I could say that. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Uh, oh, I can't save, shit! <laughs> I can't save! No! 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 Shit. Maybe profiles? The victim and a policeman, it seems that he was dating the defendant. Can I present that he was a cop? So maybe the fact that he was a cop freaked him out? I'm gonna try. Oh, I'm getting the two bar penalty again. We'll try this. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince. 
Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after shift was over. D did I get it right? Did I get it right? With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Yes! Who wants to fight me next? Who's next in line? I'll take all of you. Oh. The girl that picked up my phone was is with a policewoman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on the phone. Yeah! Wee woo, wee woo. And he went into a panic. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. A fis office, <laughs> officer. <laughs> Listen, I'm having a long day, and it's only 3 p.m. A Fisher Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. <laughs> no, the English is not happening today. <laughs> a Fisher? Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, I'm thinking, hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are. <laughs> I love when they start laughing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I love when they just, I love when they snap. Can we get some karma bang, please? I love when they snap. It's my favorite part. <laughs> Dude, the breaking point for these criminals is so good. Impressive, not bad for a person with a third rate education. <coughs> oh, the coughs are starting. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence, evidence. <laughs> Ugh, that guy's really creeping me out. All you've been waving around and talking about is a suspicious cell phone. <laughs> suspicious phone number this, suspicious con group that, we're all on that phone. Who does to say that phone is really mine? Would you prove your evidence? You want proof that this phone is yours? It looks exactly like the one you replaced it with. Uh -huh, yeah, I would have told you that earlier. <laughs> the phone I lost, I've already found it. You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Feels good to see you squirm. Uh, we do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. I think him and all his con group buddies have the same burner phone, the same Nokia. This is bad, I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Can we not look up the, like, the phone numbers? Hello? Hmm. This cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm, maybe? This phone has the names and numbers of those in the con group, in the con group on its memory. I can show them to you, your honor. Surely not fingerprints because it'll just have Maggie's fingerprints on it. I don't believe this. What are you talking about? Uh, what are we trying to determine? It, what we are trying to determine is who the phone belongs to. Surely I'm not looking up fingerprints. Who cares about what phone numbers are stored on it? Besides, who knows? Maybe you went and added some of those numbers in yourself. The witness is quite right. What? We have to check for fingerprints even though Maggie's been holding it? Oh, that jerk is back to his arrogant, annoying self again. His cell phone. There has to be something I've over... Ugh, okay. <laughs> Maggie's got her grubby little fingerprints all over it. Her McGay fingerprints all over it. I got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? You know, dust and prints. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from McGay, you wiped it off. Oh, my God. <laughs> What? You said there was sand all over it. So, oh my god, Phoenix. <laughs> wiped it. I wiped it. I wiped it. I wiped it. I wiped it. Pretty thoroughly, too. <laughs> no. It's oh so much fun watching third rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Oh, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the number stored on this phone. 
It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. Of course they did. You gotta be joking. You gotta be jorking. <laughs> he erased all the numbers I was going to use it as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much. And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, he found it with him? I, oh my god, I remember! <laughs> ah, it's when he got bonked! It's when he got bonked! Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, uh, good, I finally found it. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this case? What the hell is going on? So that's when... What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's gonna get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? The ringtone? Because she heard the same ringtone. Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. Looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? <laughs> Who am I? Hi, Annihilator! Thank you for the 63 months! Thanks for sticking around for so long. That's a long time. Good to see you. Good to see you. Also, thank you to everyone who's subbing and resubbing and stuff. We have a sub goal this month to play uh, a Nancy Drew game of chat's choice on Master Difficulty, or Master Detective. Master, or Senior Detective, whatever. They're different from the games. Senior Detective, chat gets to choose um, when we hit it in July. So it's very exciting. Thank you so much. The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. Oh, no. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at the ultra fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go with that? Objection! <laughs> wait a minute. What's your ringtone? <laughs> please wait, Your Honor. <laughs> All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Because he remembers now. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? What's the difference between questioning and harassing? <laughs> like, what's the... It feels like the line between the two is very blurry. Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. I guess. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. One shot, one shot of adrenaline. <laughs> if you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. He pulls out a gun. <laughs> get this wrong, I'll kill you. Do you fully understand? Yes, you are. I'm sure you were well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence. Not three bars. Three bars? Three bars? <sighs> um... If I choose the phone, would it be the ringtone? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the ringtone. Because the ringtone is the exact same. And I feel like that would have been decisive evidence in 2002. Is <laughs> the ringtone you bought for 99 cents. I was wrong. 
Oh, the music stopped. Is this your final answer? I mean, I saved, so yeah. <laughs> no, it's a bit disappointing. No, no, no. That was just a friendly gesture. No, no, no. You should have had to send a friendly gesture, Mr. Attorney. This is your absolute last chance. No more of these friendly gestures. <laughs> Hi, Captain America. Oh, that's so fun. I'm playing them. I'm playing through them for the first time. Um, this is the start of the second game, and I upload all of my playthroughs for the first game on my gaming channel if you feel like binging. They're pretty fun. So no more of these friendly gestures. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Please present the one piece of evidence I'll explain. Well, fuck. Bro, I don't know. <laughs> I love this description. <laughs> Generally bad at getting his point across. Um, I don't know. I thought it would be the ringtone the ringtone was the same. Um. The only thing I haven't used as evidence is my business card. <laughs> Which, like, I don't know, Ugh, business card. Would this have his address on it? Is that how he found him? Oh no, he fell asleep in the, he fell asleep in the courtroom. I'm just gonna try it, cause I don't know, brother. I don't know. Why, thank you, how nice. Here, please have one of mine. <laughs> what the fuck? Judge's business card, it's written in fancy script. The ink is strong and clear, but I still can't read it. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is... Yes, I know what it is. Um, the back of the card. This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, but but that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Oh, her phone is so cute. Uh, just need some bedazzling. Be perfect. <laughs> is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Uh, of all the idiotic, stupid things to... Ugh! Wait, he stole his phone? He swapped the phones? I didn't even put that together. I didn't even put that together. I was kind of on the right track with the ringtones, but... What? Why is my phone... And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? <laughs> Mr. Wellington. Hmm. How strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. You're... Ah! No, 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 no! It can't! <laughs> By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain any further except to say when you went to retrieve your cell phone you mistakenly took the wrong one so let me get this straight in the Phoenix Wright universe in Japanifornia there are only two types of phone and that's boy phone and girl phone <laughs> and all the boy phones look the same and all the girl phones look the same <laughs> How was I supposed to know their phone looked exactly the same? 
How was I supposed to know? <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Carson, for the resub. Happy 31 months. I've been watching you since 2018 and seeing you evolve so much is so amazing. Other than the July sub goal, what will be the next Nancy Drew game you'll play? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I would really like to finally play Midnight in Salem, but it makes me, the first time I tried to play it, it made me motion sick because there wasn't like classic clicking. It was like the movement was too slow. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to play it. Maybe I'll look into the settings and see if there's anything I can change. But it's been a few years since I've tried. So I would like to try it because that's the last Nancy Drew game I haven't played. Um, and then there's one other one that I have played but I never beat because the puzzles were really hard and I gave up. It was the one that's set in Egypt where you're like looking for, I think, Nefertari's tomb or something like that. I don't know. I never beat it because it was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is why my throat hurts after Phoenix Wright game. <laughs> oh my god, he died! We killed him! We killed him! I don't even know if it was an option. I'll have to look into it. Because the Nancy Drew games don't have a lot of accessibility options, unfortunately. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on, on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding is Mr. Wellington's naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. We did it! That was a long tutorial. I love the confetti. <laughs> I love the confetti. It's so inappropriate. Like her boyfriend's family is in the top in this in the rafters crying, and there's confetti falling from the sky. God, good lord. That is all. This court is adjourned. But Maggie never explained where she was. She needs to explain where she was, because she they said she was up top, but like she would have known he killed him. Like, I'm just so confused. Maggie gave us no information. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me, huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building. And she lived. And she lived? That's good luck, bestie. <laughs> That's good luck. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods. I shouldn't be laughing. Failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at a game of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> that was the cherry on top. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, what do you say to that? Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's why she's called Bird, because she flew nine stories? Is that why? <laughs> Up until I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. And then at the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch onto those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, oh, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. Oh, sh that old lady's dead. I gave her my hand and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. What? <laughs> oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of- What? <laughs> okay. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sport of, sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Dustin's death, your head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. <laughs> I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. 
You bet, I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. <laughs> She's gonna come back in this game. We're gonna see Magae again. Y yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. Two days later, she's dead. <laughs> we open the newspaper the next day. She's dead. Ugh, what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Mm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> what? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. He's helped more than had clashes, though. But he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. <laughs> his face this person I haven't got a clue <laughs> who the fuck are you he seems to know me but maybe he's mistaking me for someone else and this girl Maya you you finally remembered she told us her name before but okay this is Maya Faye my assistant that's right I have so many unforgettable memories about her for example earth to Nick what's wrong you keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Uh, that's not necessary. Um, I replaced you with Ima. All right, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick, let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, where is that? <laughs> Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. And that story, that story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. <gasps> Is that gonna be the next one? Yeah! That was a good tutorial. It was just a lot longer than I expected. What the hell? There's another Fae? How many Fae's are there? Or is she from the mountain? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we play it next time. We'll, we'll save that one for another time. But oh my god. It's really good. And my voice isn't killing me too much. I think the vocal warm-ups really helped. I know it's a bit dramatic, but like playing a game where you have to read every single line of dialogue, really like, it just kills my throat. But I, feel, I think the like vocal warm-ups I did earlier helped. My favorite vocal warm-up was when I went <laughs> I don't know what that does, but <laughs> felt great. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get back into Phoenix Wright. We'll keep playing these next week. Um, this weekend is Just Dance again, but we'll keep playing these next week. I'll keep uploading these to the gaming channel. Um, our playthrough of the last Nancy Drew game we played, which is the mystery of the secret clock or the, the secret of the old clock or whatever those are up if you want to watch those it's only two videos because we kind of speed ran that game we finished it really fast um my tell me why playthrough is up and then all of my last uh phoenix Wright game vods are up if you want to go watch those two it's a lot it's a lot so only watch them if you're ready for a binge um but this was really fun everyone say bye to youtube bye youtube goodbye everyone thank you so much for watching can we just watch a short intro i want to save it for next time because if I watch it now and then I play this again on Monday, I'll forget. <laughs> we'll watch it next time. Bye, YouTube. I love you. Bye.